a wild mane type look. I'm not sure, but it's wild. Welcome back to another manga review. I am so excited about this one. I was excited last time about that one, but I'm excited again because, yeah, we're getting into the nitty gritty. And today is one of my favorites. Okay, and it, let me just put this out here, and I need to go to my notes here because I have to make notes because I'm not. Ah, uh, does it even matter? <laughs> I'm so excited. Today we are going to be talking about none other than the manga Until Death Do Us Part. And I am telling you guys, if you are a manga enthusiast and you do not have this in your repertoire, you are not living. Oh, this manga is not a new manga, but it is fantastic in all of its wondrous art, plot, Absolutely everything that it is. I mean, if you enjoy manga such as Berry Ties, Action, Signing, Demographic, if you like Signing, 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 non, what is, how do you even pronounce it? I don't even know. It'd be Signing, Signing, doesn't even matter. Action, Martial Arts, this is a key component that should be in your library, hands down. If you don't even know what this is, we're not even friends. I don't even know you. Like, seriously, dude? But let's, before I go too far, because one thing I didn't look up is when was this thing, when did this come out? Let's take a look. To the, to us part. Okay. 2005. Oh my goodness. Oh, so wonderful. 2005. We are in 2019. And that's a long time ago. That's over 10 years. Pretty, pretty decent. Am I showing my age right now? No, I'm not showing my age. Y'all don't know what my age is. But we're going to get right into it. And uh, I want to preface this because the art piece that I'm drawing, I'm going to go into that at the end of this video. But it just didn't make me happy. There's so many unhappy moments with this heart, um, so bear with me. Um, now, this time I actually wrote notes, but let's just start with the summary. So the summary is, Haruka to Toyama is a 12-year-old girl with incredible precognitive abilities, but her accuracy in predicting the future has made her a target for any number of greedy corporations that would use her power for their own profit. When she's kidnapped, Haruka uses her powers to seek out someone who can help her escape and fixes upon a blind man making his way through the busy streets of Tokyo. Though it may seem an odd choice, Haruka's powers have not let her wrong. Despite his inability to see, her chosen protector's fighting skills become apparent when he draws a sword from his walking stick and deftly, daftly, daftly takes out her captors. Knowing she will always be pursued for her gift, Haruka begs um, the mysterious swordsman to keep her safe until death do us part. That summary is only the half of it. Honest to goodness, I feel like I think there was a better summary out there. I probably should have probably should have browsed through the different summaries. Uh, yeah, but yeah, okay. Let's get into it. Let's talk about that art first. This art style is so unique. Like I said, it is very similar to Veritas. Um, it is very similar to, uh, there's another one that I really liked and it just, it's overall just fantastic. Um, It's just overall fantastic. Let's just put it hands down. They, they use a lot of contrast, which has, means, in this case scenario, a lot of dark shadows. Um, just almost like, <sighs> calm down. And this is why I have tea, but it's too hot to drink, so. <laughs> so they 
use a lot of dark contrasting tones very similar to what you see in American style comics such as Marvel or DC, in which case you use the heavy shadows to create a sort of intensity within the storyline. This author also by the alias Double S does this very technique and it works out splendid. Because of his genre is saying I'm not I'm never gonna say this right. It's geared more towards college age boys and things like that. So it has a lot of action, a lot of martial arts, a lot of that shown in, in it, but it's a very detailed so it makes it a really great piece. The characters are all proportional and the action scenes superb. The flow of this manga fantastic. Generally nowadays you have a lot of four comma um, style mangas. You have a lot of three panels going into five panel type art which isn't bad but this one starts off with a nice heavy six panel six panel page then it goes into a single panel then it just goes to a full page. It just it's just so wonderful. I love the art style in here and it is one of the problems I had in the drawing, but we're not going to go there because, like I said, there are so many unhappy moments in this drawing piece, and this is a happy moment with not <laughs> like, I love this manga. I just love the way they drew the characters. Haruka is supposed to be a 12 year old girl, and she really represents that 12 year old. She represents that youth kind of aspect. Sometimes, manga gods tend to make their characters slightly younger looking or even possibly older looking or their proportions are kind of like could they would they you know should they um and they get how to cut this character perfectly love it so much and then you have hachi 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 <laughs> my heart like how do you say this name I love him too. Okay, his name is Hijukata. <laughs> Hijukata Mamoru. We're just gonna call him Mamoru. Mamoru san. Okay, he is proportionally wonderful and everything like that. What's also awesome about the art style is it's a constantly it's constantly in motion. This is one of the pieces that even if it never becomes an anime, which considering it hasn't already, I doubt it will be, but if it never, in the earth of never becomes an anime, you can still read this like it's an anime. It just has that much motion, that much characteristic. The characters each have their story and they're each fighting for a purpose and it's wonderful. There's beautiful character development, there's beautiful um, character designs. This whole thing is fantastic. The men are hot, the women are beautiful, and everybody's got their own set of skills. You might think there's a little bit of sexism in here where the women are more geared to feministic roles in this storyline. Eh, to each their own. But there is still respect for both genders, and I absolutely love it. So I, uh, so many good things about this one. Oh my goodness, if you haven't read this, you're missing out. But let's, <sighs> yeah, that art style, just fantastic. Uh, let's get back into the art style just for another split second more because I really need to explain this. Each of the characters looks significantly different from each other. Some of them kind of look similar to each other, but they don't. And the amount of characters that the author puts in this story piece is fantastic. There are so many different characters and that you think you might end up getting confused. There's so many different organizations that you're like, what is going on? And yet the author is able to connect all the pieces and play all the pieces of chess and it's just Fantastic. Love it. Oh my goodness. I love this piece so much. Until death do us part. But let's go into our next topic, which is plotline. So the plotline, like the summary said, is all about a young 12-year-old girl who has precog abilities, which puts us in a supernatural genre, because precog abilities can may or may not be considered real, depending on who you are each their own but this 
this plot in itself is just fantastic when you think about it because she's living in a modern world where she has a special ability that wasn't inherited or things like that. There's no like backstory like her great great grandmother or great grandmother had this ability it was passed down through the generations. There's none of that. She lived a normal childhood where she got lucky quite a bit of times and the family knew she had a bit of precog ability but they never overutilized it. They just helped win trips and get money and that was it but they were not overly rich or anything like that she was a normal 12 year old girl living a normal life until somebody somewhere found out she had this ability which i'm still confused on how to figure this out but regardless they take this little girl out of this habitat into the bloody underground world where she meets mamori-san who is I did not draw him, by the way. If you were wondering who that character is, it is not him. Obviously, it's not, it's not, it's not him. But Mamoru-san is beautiful, not only in his character design, but his character creation, his attitude, his characteristics, his personality, his skills. He's just gorgeous. I love him so much. So Mamoru-san is pretty much a old school type samurai guy who's living in the wrong era. Pretty much. He grew up and he learned, took up swordsmanship after he lost his parents and he just kind of went into it in order to right wrongs. He wanted to know if there was a way to be able to utilize swordsmanship in the modern day era, which makes sense. I mean, who doesn't like a good sword? I like a good sword. I have a sword. Maybe, maybe we'll play with that one. But he wants to use it, but there are guns in the modern world. Guns versus swords, mm, all depends on how you use it. Everybody's telling him it's foolish. He just decides, I'm going to train harder. So he's a trainaholic, and he's been training forever. And... Spoiler, 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 skip all of that. But something about Momoro-san before Haruka meets him, like, is he's, he's blind. He's a blind man and yet he's fantastic so sometimes you might think okay so he's blind he's gonna use like echolocation use his other senses smell and all this jazz and he does but what he also utilizes is modern technology the way the author skillfully put in modern technology to upgrade the samurai is fantastic so he can technically see through echolocation using sound waves and technology, similar to how we do it with underwater, things like that, and what's it, echographs? I don't even know what they're called. I don't know. Where we find, we create visual pictures based off of how sound waves bounce off of things. Awesome technology, and they utilized it. They were so, double S is just so brilliant in this idea. I absolutely love it. I'm getting excited again. <sighs> Nature Center. Anyway, so the plot line is that there's this blind samurai who's going to protect this girl until death do us part. Because basically she tells him, if you don't protect me, I'm going to die. Like, that's, that's the end of the story. Like, either you protect me until death comes and parts us, or you don't and I die anyway. So, he decides to take up this task and... If you read this, you'll understand he's not a terrible, terrible guy. He's just pretty awesome. <laughs> but he decides to take on this task, and this, um, like, sends them on a, like, I'm saying, like, what? It sends them on a downward spiral, so to say, of different conflicts, because ever there is a whole plethora of people, I'm not going to be specific, <laughs> who are after how to cut the bill. I mean, she can, she has precog abilities, which means she can see a limited bit of the future, which is pretty awesome in itself. I mean, the things you could do with that. Uh, I had a concept in my head, but I'm not going to tell you because I might use that concept later based off of this story, but not yet. Anyway, 
the point is the plot is fantastic and there are other characters in there as well such as assassins such as tech people such as infiltrators and all these characters come in and they work fantastically you see the villains you see the heroes and it's just blending so nicely and did i mention the art style is brilliant brilliant i know brilliant i don't understand if you do not if you do not get this point the art is brilliant you've already missed out on life oh yes okay okay we're good is my tea full enough to drink yes okay okay <sighs> tastes like fruit loops i put way too much sugar <laughs> and yet it's still so good Like I said, Until Death Do Us Part is a brilliant manga to include in your repertoire. If you have not read this, you should have read this, or you should be reading this now, because it's just that brilliant. It's one of those stories that I would be happy to buy the actual books for. I mean, sometimes I don't like to buy the books because I'm cheap, cheap like that, but this is one of them. I have three. I bought in this one. And I will tell you about the other two another time. Oh, one of them is Shoujo. Maybe I should do that. Yes. It actually might fit in with my goals. <laughs> so, let's for a, for half a second just, um, just talk about this art right now. Uh, I was so furious with this art piece. Kid you not. I was trying to use references. Now the character that's in this picture, I'm going to tell you, is from obviously the story Until Death Do Us Part. His name is. <laughs> Love him so much. His name is Jesus, right? <laughs> There's a whole thing. When you read it, if you haven't, and if you have, you understand. But when you read it, you'll understand it as well. But his name is Jesus, and he is an assassin and a teacher. He he's. He's like, everybody calls him sensei. He's very protective of children, which is really awesome. But he is an assassin with more kills than anybody has read. He is number one assassin in this story. He's got skills for days. He be using guns like no but business. Okay. He's just that bomb.com. And I love Jesus because he's just pretty awesome. He just, he's pretty cool in himself. Is he cooler than my motor son? Possibly. <laughs> you don't see a lot. Jesus, Jesus. I feel like so bad in saying that. I mean, I love Jesus. Like, Jesus and this Jesus. It doesn't even matter. Okay. But <laughs> he has his own storyline as well. Like, there was an additional storyline just for him because he was such a great character. So when you read this until that this part, also read that because that gives you a clear backstory about him. And I did read that one too, and which is probably why I love him so much because he's just, he's just so. <laughs> but the character I drew, I wanted to make her. She's pretty much my OC. I've drawn her before. Um, oh snap! I forgot our little doohickey. I was just so unhappy with this picture when it was when it was coming together like I wasn't happy with I was trying to use a reference for Jesus character and I couldn't match the art style that the author chose I mean I it's okay the way it came out but it could have been significantly better I just couldn't seem to do it and I was like you know what bomb this I'm just gonna do it in my style and it didn't come out bad but it didn't come out the way I wanted so I was a little frustrated with that and at that point after I was erasing like three or four times, I was just like, I'm sick of this. And I just did whatever at that point. Like, the female character wasn't too bad, but at the same time, I was not caring anymore. So I like forgot a couple of pieces. And then I was so done with this piece. And you know, as an artist, you get that way, where you get times where you're so frustrated. I just worked on a uh, acrylic piece and I didn't like there's a whole white space in the middle because I was just like this is 
horrible. I'm stopping right now. Like, I can't even finish it. You should always finish your work, even if it doesn't look good. Good. That is advice for me or senpai. But as for me in this house... <laughs> Either way, the art piece didn't come out too, too horribly. I'm pretty sure some people would be like, that's a pretty good piece. What are you talking about? But for me and my level of quality, I know I could do this piece better. So maybe one day, like when I'm feeling into it, I might recreate this piece. Um, but it was just going downhill really quickly. And then the colors, okay. So I was so upset with this art piece. I didn't even want to erase the sketch marks. I didn't want to color the piece in at all. I was just like, you know what? We're just going to leave this just the way it is. But I felt a little bad that there was absolutely no color in this piece. So I was like, all right, you know what I can do? What I always tend to do sometimes, what I've done lately, is when I get to a point where I don't want to erase sketch marks and I don't want to color it in, what I'll usually do is add highlighter. Highlighter is just like a brilliant way to give it a pop of color, make it seem a little fun and not so serious. I know some people can use highlighters like bomb, but I use it when I'm not being too serious and I just want a little bit of fun. I did it a lot when I was like doodling at work, so I'd like doodle and then I just use my highlighter and that was my color because I couldn't bring my Copics and stuff to work. So. <laughs> That's what I do when I'm not too serious. So I was like, okay, I'll use my highlighters. And then I realized I didn't have my highlighters on me. Because whenever I need something, it's never around. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> Why isn't he real? Oh, can we take a second though, um, before I continue talking about this piece? There are so many young girls and older men in this storyline that are like, this and I'm so confused. I can we research that for a second? I just I just need clarification here because I'm just um confused. How old is Ma Ma Maru Mamaru San da, 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 da. How old is Mamaru? Okay. Oh, he has his own fandom. If you guys don't ever use that page, get it together. And he's a 170. 170? Really? You're 170? His, and he's bending the... Okay. That, I'll put that picture... I'm pretty sure I put that picture in the beginning of the video when I was talking about it. Um, what is 170? Oops. I don't know how to type. This is how we live our lives in this modern age. We just... Um, uh, what, did, what was I saying? We just... Use our phones for everything. I don't even know. Height, okay. Two inches. I, I forgot. <laughs> oh, two feet. Feet. Oh, he's only like five, six. That's not bad. I mean, it's still taller than me. I'm only five, one. If you guys are curious, I'm obviously a shorty mix for short. Okay, he's, see, here, it says, Okay, in the fandom, right, it says he is a tall, young, late 20s, early 30s man with short, shaggy black hair. So he's his, in his late 20s, not even early 20s, and she's 12. That makes him at least minimum 10 years older than her. That's a huge difference. Okay, my mother and stepfather are 10 years apart, and you can't tell that as they're older. But when you think about that when they're young... A big difference he waited what i like about the story line as well <laughs> there's so many great things is that he waited until she was older in order to pursue a relationship with her he waited till she was an adult because he's like i about to go to jail <laughs> um but there's just i don't even know how you would describe this kind of situation but there's a lot of that kind of late 20s 12 year olds and I'm just not sure how I feel like what I in my current age whatever age that may be I could be incredibly young go for a much younger man like a man 10 years younger than me 
no, not for me. Uh, <clears throat> no, I, I couldn't do it personally. I personally couldn't do it. And I, that could be because I have younger brothers and, uh, I don't, <sighs> the younger generation is just a little, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's mature guys who are younger. I just haven't met any. <laughs> I mean, I haven't met a lot of mature older guys either. Yeah, I'm practically, like, asexual at this point. Like, I have really no desire for humans. could deal with my motor and that would be legitimately okay but he's going after a middle school girl oh, I can't. what were we talking about right the picture <laughs> anyway so i made in this picture i could have made her a little younger i made her slightly younger in my other picture but I wanted her to be older because I kind of wanted her to match his age because I do think uh, it's okay to be a little uh, to have a partner who might be a little older or a little bit younger than you. But when it's too far in a gap, you reach different milestones that could be difficult to kind of get over that hurdle. And I kind of wanted them to be similar in age, so I made her older. And even though he's like super defensive about his students, which would be a nice play, like teacher-student relationship, I did think this through. I decided to go with a more teacher feel because in the other one that I did, she was more of a student. So. First, when I was reading this, I thought it was like Jesus. Um, I was like, oh, okay, it's not Jesus, it's Jesus. His name is Jesus. But there's this, this, there's this gag, kind of not really a gag, but it, it's kind of a gag uh, about his name. So <laughs> it's Jesus. I love. I'm a motorista. Okay, I am officially losing it. Anyway. So that is this week's review. Like I said, if you haven't read this, you should. It is definitely one of those mangas that need to be in your repertoire. It needs to go in that library of yours. As a manga enthusiast, you need this in your life. I am just so thrilled. I'm so happy. I read this one, reread this one, maybe 20 to 30 times. It's just that fantastic. And you can never get tired of it because there's just so many beautiful elements in it you can appreciate art if you can appreciate storyline plot line scenery everything this manga is a beautiful representation of how a manga should look and it just does splendificent just so nitpickingly well I'm sure there's probably some critiques out there about this, but I think it's a fantastic one regardless. And maybe next time I'll do a shoujo. Maybe I won't. Maybe you'll see one. Maybe you won't. <laughs> we'll see. But if you like this video, please hit that like. And if you want to, subscribe. subscribe do not hesitate. And I will see you guys again another time. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye.